What's up YouTube and welcome to another Infinite Painter tutorial where today I'm going to show you how you can create this cute bear design. Now as always this links to everything you're going to need in the description down below. I've started implementing the palettes in a slightly different way where we're going to use this graphic here of the palette and simply grab the colors as we need them. There's a few colors in there that we don't actually end up using fully by the end. But there's also a guide as well, a little stencil guide. You're going to need to save that to your photos on your device and then we're going to insert it as a layer later on. Likewise, we're going to insert the palette image as well as a reference image. So I'll talk you through all of that when we get into the actual tutorial. As always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram. Please do a massive favor and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these Infinite Painter tutorials. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching and let's get started. So as always, we're gonna go ahead and create a blank canvas. And today's canvas size is 2000 by 2000. That's very typical of mine. You're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and find a canvas size that is square that fits your device if you haven't got very many layers to play with. Once we hit create, we're gonna do one of two things. We're gonna go ahead and add in our palette. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to the three dots here and we're gonna to go to the option here of import. And once we tap on import, we're gonna go ahead and select the photo or wherever you saved the palette image to. And once you go ahead and tap on the image, we're gonna go ahead then and make it a reference. And that will then position it as a floating window up here. Now I can, with my Apple Pencil for example, I can tap and if you look at the color here, every time I tap it changes color. So if I just need to tap on a color to change it. For you, you may need to go ahead and go to the three dots and settings. And you may wanna go ahead and change either the option here of a long press or a double tap to the eyedropper. I have the eyedropper as a long press just in case, but otherwise you may need to go ahead and turn that on. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna introduce the stencil. So we're gonna go back up to the three dots. We're gonna go back to the option of import and we're gonna go ahead and select photos again and find the stencil wherever you saved it. And once you have the stencil, just simply tap on it and then import it as a layer. And then from there, it will then drop the stencil onto the screen and we'll hit the tick when we're done. And I'm gonna go ahead and just lower the opacity down of it down to around about sort of 20 to 30%. It doesn't really matter for you. You can keep it as whatever you like. I've dropped it down to 25 just so I can vaguely see it on the screen. Now, one thing we're gonna use quite often in this tutorial is the option of the fill tool. So if you go up to your tools, you can actually hold down on a tool and then position it up here at the top. If you can't do that or you don't have the facilities, then you'll just need to, every time I use the fill tool, just come into here and use it. But the fill tool now is pinned at the top. We're also gonna go ahead and we're gonna use a symmetry tool. So we're gonna go back into our create options. We're gonna go to the option of symmetry and turn that on. It will lock itself in the middle by default and we'll just hit the lock straight away, which means that we've locked in that symmetry line. What that means is if I create a new layer and I drag it underneath our stencil, so we're keeping our stencil at the top and an empty layer here, if I go ahead and just quickly draw anything on one side, it's gonna do it on both sides. So let's get started by changing our background color. So we'll go to this option here. We'll change our background color by tapping on here, go into the pipette, and then we'll simply tap on the color in the very bottom right of that palette image to change it to the light pink. And then we're gonna go ahead and start drawing in all the basic shapes for our bear. We're gonna start with the face area at the top and make our way down and then go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here, the middle of that second column from the right. We're gonna go ahead and make sure our brush is changed to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. And as always with the monoline brush, I've gone into my settings and I've changed the smoothing up to around about 80, which allows my lines to be nice and smooth as I draw them. Now brush size, it does not matter what your brush size is, as long as you've got a good enough size that you can see it on the screen, of course. I'm gonna reduce it down there for a little bit. It's down to about 35. And the first shape we're gonna draw in is the face. Now, as you'll be able to see, we've got the symmetry tool in play. So I can start on one side and just cross over that line and then just smoothly draw in the shape of our bear's head. And don't worry if you make any mistakes, you can just carry on around the opposite side there like I've just done. And then once you've done that, go up to your fill tool and just tap and it'll fill and tap and drag to the right, just so you can get rid of that very small ghost line here. They've made an update to Infinite Painter, so it's a lot better now at getting rid of that little line. Let's then go ahead and create another new layer, drag it underneath our head there, so it's underneath, and we'll get started on the ears. So I'm gonna zoom in on the ear on the right here, 
and I'm just going to draw it in against this larger circle shape that I've created here and then go underneath and link it up at the beginning so that I can tap on my fill tool and I can tap on it and fill it and drag it to the right just to fill it in and get rid of any artifacts and hit the tick when you're done. Now you may need to go ahead and adjust some shapes at any point. You'll also notice that when you use the symmetry tool, it does not apply to the fill option. So you do have to tap on the fill and tap on the other side and tap and drag just to fill that in and hit the tick when you're done. We need to create a couple more layers for the ears. So we'll create another new layer. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the middle here of the fifth column, this blue here. Once you grab that, we're gonna go ahead and draw on the inside of the ear here. So we're gonna go into here, draw this shape in, go all the way across and you might just wanna just simply paint it in. And then we're gonna create another new layer. Go back to the middle color in that second column from the right and we'll draw in just this little tiny bit here on the inside of the ear. Let's then tap on the face, then create another new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to this color here, the middle of the far right column. And we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna draw in the nose area here, nose and mouth area. Link that up at the top, grab the fill tool and tap and drag. Then I'm gonna go ahead and create another new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the tick because I'm done with the fill tool. I'm gonna to grab this color here, the middle of the fourth column. Same brush still, we're gonna just reduce the brush size down a little bit though to around about sort of 20 points. So I'm gonna draw here in the nose area. So I'm gonna draw this in. It's like a heart, but with just a flat top. And then we'll just quickly fill that in. Like so. We'll then go ahead and grab our brush and make it a little bit smaller now, the monoline brush, down to around about probably eight points is pretty good. I'm gonna draw in a line straight down the middle to this point here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a nice smooth curve to here. And you can hold your pen down if you want to to make it a nice perfect curve. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw in this line here along the mouth. So I'm gonna go edge to edge, but hold it down so it snaps into play. And then we're done with that. So I can just simply tap in the middle of the nose, for example. I'm gonna move across to the eye now, where I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit bigger again, probably around about to a sort of 30. And from there, we're just gonna go ahead and draw in the shape of the eye like so, and then fill that in as well. Zooming out, you've now got the sort of features of the face, and we're gonna go ahead and add some highlights onto here. So we'll grab this color here, the middle of the far right column, and we're gonna to go to our brush, and we're gonna change it to calligraphy and the soft taper. Now the brush size is currently set to around about sort of 30 points. We're gonna zoom in, we're gonna add a lovely little accent on the nose. So we're gonna start really light on the edge and press a little bit firmer towards the middle here, just trying to widen it up like so, just to add in that little highlight. We're then gonna take a look at the eye here and we're gonna add in a little circle light down here, followed by a little sort of larger shape up here at the top, just like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and on the same layer, we're gonna grab the middle of that fourth column again and just add in the tiniest little eyebrow shape. So you're just gonna draw in what looks like a little sort of teardrop shape. So I'm just gonna press a little bit firmer, a little bit quicker up here just to create that little eyebrow shape. We're then gonna go ahead and draw in the rest of the body. So we're gonna create a new layer, drag it down underneath all of your layers right towards the bottom. We're gonna grab that middle color here in the second column from the right and your brush wants to be changed back to the option of the monoline brush. We're gonna draw in the arms here, so we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna draw the arms in here, so we're gonna follow the guide round, and then link it up. Grab your fill tool, tap and drag, tap and drag. We're then gonna draw in the feet, so we'll create another new layer. It needs to sit in front. We'll hit the tick on the option of the fill, because we're done with that. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the middle of this column here, the middle of the fifth column and your brush will stay the same. We're gonna draw in the feet here, so you can start at the bottom down here, keeping it nice and sort of smooth, keep your lines as smooth as you can. Now I just had a little jitter there on my screen, so I'm just gonna go around and in front of those arms ever so slightly. And you may need to just adjust this shape ever so slightly, just to sort of link them up nicely in the corner. And then grab your fill tool, drag, tap and drag, Tap and drag a couple of times if you need to, just to get rid of those little artifacts. 
and then we just need to fill in the body shape as well. So we'll create another new layer and drag it to the bottom. We'll go ahead and we're going to grab the color here at the bottom of the third column. I'm going to hit the tick here on the fill because we're done with it, but the bottom here of that third column from the right, your brush will stay the same. We're just going to go ahead and draw across the body here. I'm carrying on my line and I'm just going to go around here and then link it up here somewhere at the top. So as long as you've gone all the way around and created a loop so that you can go to your fill tool and you can tap and drag to the right to fill that in and hit the tick when you're done. Let's then go ahead and add in the pads here for the feet. So we're going to tap on the feet that we've got here, the layer for it. We'll create a new layer in front of it. We'll grab the middle color here in the sec uh, far right column. And we're going to zoom in and we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make my brush size the right size straight off the bat. So if I make my brush 55 points, I should just be able to simply tap on these circular areas here. And it's almost exactly the right size. So we've got four little pads and then we'll draw in the main one here as well. You can keep the brush size the same so that you have some nice circular corners. I'm going to just fill this in like so, zooming out. You should then have all of the basic shapes in order to get started with the actual painting area of this. So let's simply take a look at our layers from top to bottom. You can go ahead and turn off your guide if needs be. But starting at the top, we've got the eyes and the nose. We're completely done with that. We don't need to touch that. The next layer down is this white area here in the middle of the face. We're going to go ahead and we're going to tap on the layer. We'll tap on the layer again and we're going to go to this option here of lock, which means you can't paint outside of whatever's painted on that layer already. If you try to paint in a different area, it's not going to do anything. But if you paint there, for example, on the nose, it's now visible. We're going to grab this color here at the top right of the palette. Your brush wants to be set to the paint brush of the Goucher brush. And the opacity here, as you can see, my settings, 40 and the other options there as well. Now we're going to go ahead with a brush size of about 270. We're going to start outside of the nose here and just sort of bring the color in and wrap it around at the bottom. And you're going to do that a couple of times. We're going to layer the color on top of each other. And you can see if I start to layer it on top, you really do slowly start to get like a good build up of that color. And if you do have pressure sensitivity, you can keep it really, really light and just sort of blend it in really slowly. You then want to go ahead and change your brush color to the middle of the fourth column. And we're going to go ahead and just darken up a little bit more on the edge ever so slightly and towards the bottom as well. We're going to got to be a little bit bolder with our shadows because eventually we're going to sort of have this much darker tone throughout the rest of the design. So we've got this darker sort of under area here of the nose. And that's all we're going to do for the nose. So that's just a nice little practice. The next layer down is the head. Again, we're going to tap on the layer and we're going to alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it. We're going to move to a slightly more yellow tone, so the bottom of the second column from the right. And we're going to go ahead and go left to right and just very lightly build up some yellow tone on the forehead area. It's very, very subtle. You might be able to see it in your work. You might not be able to see it in mine. But I'm just building up some yellow tone towards the top area there of the head. Now, if my colors look ever so slightly different to yours, don't worry. It's exactly the same palette. Just make sure to follow along continuously with the same colors. We're then going to go ahead and grab this white in the middle of the far right column. And we're going to be really, really gentle. So you may need to lower your opacity down a little bit more if needs be. But we're going to slowly just sort of build up a lighter patch here on the head. And you can see I've gone backwards and forwards a few times here. I want to get a little bit of that white in. Then I'm going to go back to the base color, the middle of that second column from the right. And I'm going to lightly round the edges, just start to blend it out. So I'm going to Go left to right over the top of it, left to right, and I'm going to just blend that light tone out a little bit, making sure it's not too punchy at the top here. So I'm just going over the top of it really lightly multiple times, and I'm also trying to purposely push the highlight a little bit higher onto the head. So I've left it a little bit on the edge, and we've got a nice sort of white patch here towards the top of the head. And then once we've done that, we'll move into the pink tone at the top of that second column from the right. We're going to bring in some pink down here and we're going to go around the bottom area here of the face and go round in a circle. Start to go round in a circle and it's obviously using the symmetry tool. So you can go round and round and push that pink a little bit higher onto sort of where we're imagining the cheeks are. Then we'll move to a slightly more punchy red. So the top of that third column from the right. 
and we'll go round in a circle, round in a circle, keep going and just slowly build up the colour. You can see every time I draw in, it's slowly building up that colour. We're going to get into some really punchy red tones around here in a moment. And then we'll move to the even more punchy, sort of darker red in the middle of that third column from the right. And again, just go round in a circle. We're trying to sort of flush out the cheek area a little bit more, giving our bear some nice rosy cheeks. And once you've added in a good solid amount of colour like this, we can then move to our shadow tone again, which was the middle of that fourth column. And we're going to lightly just go round the bottom of the head. Like so, I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger, around about sort of 310 now just so I've got a little larger, um, a little larger, a larger head of my brush to play with. I'm just gonna undo that again, just keep going round the bottom of the head, trying to build up that shadow. And then most prominently as well, under here, underneath our nose, I'm just gonna go to the left and to the right, just trying to darken up underneath the nose a bit more. And you can bring the brush size down if needs be, and just sort of blend that out a little bit more underneath the nose, giving that shadow coming down from the top and just underneath the nose here, nice and dark. We'll add in the tiniest little bit underneath the eyes as well. So we're just gonna make our bear look a little bit tired with a, a bit of a bag underneath its eyes. And then if we take a look at our layers, the next layer down is the inside of the ear there. Now we'll leave that little one for a minute. We'll do the larger one first. So we're gonna go to this layer here, tap on it and alpha lock it. We're gonna go ahead and grab the middle or bottom color in that second column from the right. Again, it's using the symmetry tool. So we're just gonna brighten up over the top here. We're gonna brighten up in here as well. The light's coming from the top, so it's gonna hit this edge, it's gonna hit this edge too. We'll then go ahead and grab the white in the middle of that far right column. And we'll brighten up the top of the ear again. A Couple of just nice light strokes in here, light nice strokes here on the inside of the ear. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in the darker tones. So the top of that second column from the right, you're gonna to wanna to start to introduce some of the more pinky red tones. So the underside of our ear here, gonna get a nice chunk of pink for a moment. The inside under edge as well. That's very subtle, but once we start to move into those much darker tones in a minute, it's gonna to start to really come to life. Let's do exactly that. Let's jump to the middle of that third column from the right. We're gonna darken up under here. Gonna keep going round and round, adding in that red, adding in some red under here as well. And then we're also gonna go ahead and just sort of shade this area here. So I'm just trying to curve in my brush outwards, where it's just a little bit darker closer to the head. Then if we grab the middle of that fourth column again, and we go left to right again, just sort of shading a little bit closer to the head and blending that round as well as the same areas we did before. So the underside of the ear, like so. So just shade in the underside. We'll shade the underside in here too, creating that lovely depth effect in the inside of the ear. And then you may need to just get in here and just adjust like any paint strokes that are a bit sort of wild. So I'm gonna grab the middle of that second column from the right. I'm gonna reduce my brush size just down a little bit, down to about sort of 60. I'm just gonna blend that out. That paint stroke there is a little bit too sort of defined, so I can just blend that out a little bit. And you can just sort of, just feather out any shadows. But that's looking fun. That's looking nice and sort of shaded. Got that nice dark shadow there. Let's then move to the inside of the ears. So let's go up a layer to the blue area. And you can see if you were to turn that off, you get that sort of concave effect. So if we go up, to the blue ears, we'll tap on them and we will alpha lock them as well. So you can't paint outside of them, of course. We're gonna move straight to the darker tones to start with. So the bottom of the fifth column here, this color here, I'm gonna move that brush back up to around about sort of the 100 marker again. And on the underside here of the ear, I'm gonna go ahead and just shade that in. So I'm gonna build up the darkness here at the top and blend down into a lighter tone. So I'm just darkening up under there. I'll grab that shading color again, so the uh, middle of the fourth column. We'll go ahead and darken up under here, building it up. Every paint stroke that you make with your brush is just gonna build up that shadow in there. And then we'll move to the brighter blue. So we'll go to the top here of the fifth column. We'll do the underside down here. 
So where the light's coming in, it's just catching here and it's maybe just, just lightening up the inside of the ear. We'll move to the top of the fourth column and we'll introduce some brighter blue here as well. Like so. And now we should have these awesome little shaded ears. And now we've got just a little sort of bit here on the edge of the head. So if we go ahead and go up a layer again, tap on it, alpha lock it. We're gonna jump straight to this color here, the middle of the third column, because it's just a small area. We're just gonna simply follow the curvature of some of the shading lines that we previously made. So I wanna leave the end of it a little bit yellow. And then I'll grab my shading color, the middle of the fourth column, and again, sort of shade following the same curvature as I did with the others, just sort of shading that to match it. Now at this point, if we then go ahead and go back down to our blue layer, just wanna add in a little shadow on the underside of it. So I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit smaller, around about sort of 40 points this time, and just sort of just shade under there a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a, a shadow. So let's take a look at our layers. We've done the ears, what's the next layer down? We've got the little feet there. So let's go ahead and tap on them. We'll alpha lock them, so the white areas here. And they're pretty straightforward. We just need to do two colors here for some shading. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the top of the second column. Same brush still, of course. Let's make the brush size around about sort of 80 to start with. And we're just gonna go around the bottom here of the pad. Don't worry if you run into the four dots above, we'll sort them out in a moment. We're just gonna sort of blend in a really nice shadow under here, as well as a little one that rolls round the edge. I wanna just sort of add in a little bit of a shadow on the edge here. So I'm just, you can see I'm outside of the shape, making my way in, like so. So just, just adding in a little bit of that shadow. We'll then move to our darker tone. So be quite sparing with this, the middle of the fourth column. And go round the base again, building up shadow, line by line. That looks pretty good to me. And we'll add in a little one right round the edge. So I'm gonna reduce the brush size down to something quite small this time, about sort of 30. And I'm gonna just go round the edge, adding in a little bit of a darker inset of shadow. A little something like this. Now we just need to fix the little dots here. So we're just gonna to go to our color on the middle of that far right column. And you may just need to go over this a few times. Just just color, color it in again. Just change that color back to what it was. So just, just go over the top of it. You can change it to the monoline brush if that's quicker and easier. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change our color to the top of that second column. And again, we're just gonna Probably increase our brush size up a little bit, probably up to about sort of 50. Just sort of shade in the underside of each one of these pads, making sure that the bottom edge has got a really nice dark shadow to it. You can jump to that darker tone as you go. I'm gonna do all of them to start with, and then I'll go back and I will add in a darker tone towards this bottom edge. I'm just sort of curving my, my pen strokes as I can to just darken up the underside here. And we're keeping it nice and loose. It's meant to be a painting style, just a little bit loose, especially with the texture of the brush, etc. Then I'll grab the middle of the fourth column again, and I'll just darken up the very bottom edge. Very bottom edge. Like so. And of course, it's done it on both sides for us. Now these shading areas here don't really make much sense until we go back down to the blue layer here, we tap on it and we alpha lock it and now we start to add the shading and highlights to this. So if we go ahead first of all and we grab the top colour here in the fifth column here, make our brush size a little bit larger because we've got a bigger area to cover, so about sort of 146. I'm going to go ahead and just lighten up the top edge of the foot. So I'm just going to continue just to build up that colour, brightening up the top edge where the highlights are coming down from. I'm then gonna grab the top of the fourth column, this much brighter blue, and focus that a little bit more towards the top edge. So just focusing that right up against that very top edge. And then I'm gonna grab the white as well, in the middle of that far right column, and be very, very light with this, just to sort of really just brighten out the top edge of the foot even more, just a little something like this. And then to counter that, we'll also go ahead and we'll grab the middle of the fourth column there. I'm gonna make the brush size again a little bit bigger, about sort of 200 now, and just sort of shade in the very bottom area here. I'm going left to right, just sort of blending upwards, 
and then eventually going to start to get a bit more sort of bold with my shadows here at the bottom. I'm just blending these colors up stroke by stroke and then by the end the very bottom here will be super super dark. And then as I mentioned we're going to add in some shading here to make this all come to life a bit more as well. So we're going to reduce our brush size down to something really small probably around about sort of 220 maybe. If we take a look at here we're going to add in a shadow around the little pad here really small and on the top edge and I'm just expanding that out a little bit sort of blending it out and I'll do the same here too so quite sort of dark right up against it and then just very lightly creating like a, a larger shadow there and what this is going to do this is going to make these little pads look like they're indented in the actual like foot here so it's like a bit recessed almost and by adding a highlight in a moment as well we're also going to really make that 3D look because we've done the top edge where the shadow is when we add the highlight on the underside it really sort of gives it that 3D look to it. I'm doing exactly the same here I'm just going along these edges here creating that dark shadow to start with and then just really lightly just expanding on that creating a little bit of a larger indent like so just a little something like that. And then if we go ahead and we grab the middle of the far right column and we do it the same on the underside, so really light though, keep it really light and then a really light, lighter, larger little ring there at the bottom. So you go around it a couple of times and then just, just brighten it up a little bit on the bottom edge. Should, when you zoom out in a minute, it should look like it really is recessed into this little pore pad area of our bear. Zooming out, straight away you get that effect. I can see it straight away. And we need to do the same of course with this larger pad as well. So as it makes its way round here, we want the highlight to start to catch and it's gonna come all the way round down here. We may need to do this a couple of times just to sort of build up the colour. Nothing too heavy though. And just lightly just sort of blend it around that top edge if needs be sort of blend it around there and likewise just sort of extend it a little bit as well down here. Should end up with this lovely little recessed look in the feet. Let's then go down a layer. The next one is the arms. We'll tap on them and we'll alpha lock them. We'll go to our colours and we're going to grab the lighter tone here, the colour here in the bottom of that second column from the right. We'll increase the brush size up to something around about sort of 120 and I'm just going to brighten up this area here of the arm. I'm just going to go over that a few times, just adding in a little bit of a highlight on that top edge of the arm. We're then going to move to the top of the second column from the right, and we're going to introduce that pink tone. And that's going to just sort of blend on top of the yellow a little bit. It's going to take over the very bottom edge of the arms and underneath here of the head. So you're kind of leaving a little bit of this yellow here exposed on the top of the arms only, really. And then around the back, that also is going to lose a little bit of its color. We're then going to move to the top of the third column from the right and we're going to continue on just to just to boost that. So where the shadows are towards the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just add in a little bit more of this red tone, a little bit underneath the head as well, on top of that arm. And then we'll wrap this round at the back. We'll then move back to our darker red so the middle of the third column from the right and we'll just darken this up a couple of more shades darkening it up a little bit more towards the bottom we'll then move to our shadow color the middle of the fourth column from the right and we're going to go ahead and just shade under here and blend that up keeping it nice and light and likewise underneath the head we'll shade underneath there as well and wrap that round at the back. Just wrap that round a tiny bit. You can always lighten it up in a minute with some extra highlights. But something like that is nice and bold. We've got a lovely dark look to it. And as I mentioned, if you need to, you can always go ahead and grab, say, that yellow again, the bottom of the second column from the right, and just sort of just fade out some of your shadows if need to be. You know, I can I can blend out those ones on the back a little bit more. And what we're then going to do is we're going to create a new layer. We're going to tap on it and we're going to clipping mask it to the arms. So we tapped on it and gone to the option of clip. 
we're going to go ahead and grab the middle color here of the uh, blue section, so the middle of the fifth column. And we're going to go ahead and just cover the end of the arms here to create sort of mini paw pads. So I'm just going to make the brush size a bit smaller, about sort of 77 this time. I'm going to keep going over that until I end up with a good solid blue color. But it's got that nice little sort of blend on the edges. And you can maybe sort of curve it round a bit more at the bottom and maybe even a little bit at the top too. Just until you get the ends of the arms with this little bit of color. What we're then going to do is we're going to tap on this layer and we're going to alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of the blue area now. If we then go ahead and we grab the darker blue at the bottom of the fifth column, we're going to follow the shading lines of the colors that we've added in the red and orange area. So I'm just darkening up here and I'm trying to just literally copy some of the lines here just to try and continue on the painting effect and make it quite seamless. I'm just going to just leave this area here the brightest. I'm talking about brightness. Let's move into the top of the fifth column and we'll just blend over the top of that, brightening up this area here the most, blending down a little bit. Then I'm going to grab the top of the fourth column and do exactly the same. I'm going to follow where that yellow is and it's pretty much here. So I'm just going to go over the top of that, blending it down just a tiny bit to carry on where the highlights are onto our blue areas. And of course, we just need to add in that dark purple. So I'm gonna grab the color underneath it. So the middle color in that fourth column again. Don't really need to add any on the top. It's just down here where I just need to sort of continue on where the, the darkest purple areas are, which is right down here. And then we're gonna add in some lovely little minor details. If we create a new layer, it should clip itself automatically. We're gonna go ahead and continue with this dark tone we've got, but we're gonna to go to our brush. We're going to go back to calligraphy. We're going to go ahead and use the soft taper brush. And we're going to create three little grooves here for some cute little fingers. So we're going to go ahead and just start outside here with a brush size of 30. I'm going to start out here and then just sort of let that sort of curve in like this. And another one, two, and another one, two. So we've got three in total. Then we can add the same sort of recessed look here, but to these lines. So what we'll do is we'll create a new layer and we'll drag it underneath the dark lines that we just created. So it's on a separate layer. If we go back to our brush and we go back to paint and we go back to the Goucher brush. If we go ahead and reduce that brush size down to something around about sort of maybe 20 or 22. Let's go ahead and grab the shadow tone. So the color here is the middle of that fourth column. We're going to zoom in and we're going to add in a light, light little sort of shadow here on the top edge. So keeping it really light, we don't want to add in too dark of a recessed area here. And then we'll counter that with a lovely bright blue. So we'll go to the blue first of all, the top of that fourth column. And we'll add in a little brighter blue area here at the bottom. Now you may not be able to see it too well in the areas here where we're in the lighter area of the blue. But like down here, you'll be able to see it much more like so. And then it's up to you. You can jump to the white here in the middle of that far right column. Maybe reduce the brush size down even smaller, maybe down to about sort of 10 and zoom in. And then just under here, just add in the lightest little bit of highlight underneath those. So that when you zoom out, you've got these lovely little cute recessed little sort of pores, little breakup of maybe the, the fingertips or something like that. Let's then go ahead and move into the body. So if we tap on the body and we lock it, we're going to go ahead and grab the dark red here in the middle of that third column from the right. Our brush wants to be still the same painting brush, but we'll bring that size back up. We'll bring the size back up to around about sort of the 200 mark. And we'll go left to right and we're going to shade underneath the head here, underneath, bringing that shadow down quite a bit. So I'm just going to curve my pen a little bit better. I'm going to shade underneath the arms there. And I'll shade at the bottom and blend up. So blending that up from the bottom. Leaving this area here in the middle the lightest. I'm going to just darken up underneath those arms as well. We're then going to move to our shadow color, the middle of that fourth column. We're going to shade underneath the head. We're going to try and keep it a little bit light to start with. We don't want to go too dark too early. So we just want to sort of blend that down, blending that down. Then we'll reduce the brush size down just a little bit, probably down to maybe around about 80 or 90, just so we can just darken up underneath the pores here. 
And you can make it quite sort of a defined shadow and we'll darken up underneath the arms on the right. And we will definitely darken up at the bottom here, blending up, just making sure that the very bottom edge basically is going to be the darkest. So it's where the light, of course, is falling off completely. And we get that darker tone right here. Now this area here in the middle of the tummy, we can then start to introduce the orange tone. So the middle of that second column from the right. And we're going to very lightly in the center here. Keep going down, blending outwards, blending on top of your shadows as well. That's perfectly fine. You can blend up into that gap a tiny bit if you wish. We're just trying to reintroduce the bear's natural color rather than these darker tones. We'll grab the yellow at the bottom of that second column from the right. And then in the center here of your orange, you know, brighten that up with a little bit of yellow. And you can even be a little bit braver and go to the white here in the middle of that far right column and add in a light, light, light patch area here in the center. It's totally up to you if you want to add that in and to what level. I think I'm going to go ahead and redo that just once more and just very, very lightly get in there with a lighter tone. And that's actually all the layers done for our bear. Let's just add in some background elements of some shading and some color. So we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to drag it all the way to the very bottom. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the top color here in that far right column. And we're going to go left to right left to right, adding in like a bit of a floor area. So I'm going to make the brush size a bit bigger, probably around about sort of 150 and just sort of create like a floor area. And then mainly towards sort of the base of the bear, you want to just darken that up a little bit more. So just darkening that up, switch to our darkest shadow color, the middle of that color column here, the middle color of the fourth column. And we will just darken this up underneath the bear. You can be a little bit bold, you can be a little bit bold. So I'm just dropping the size down to about sort of 90 because I want to just darken up underneath the body of the bear the most where it's sat on the ground. And then we'll go ahead and we'll create another new layer. We'll drag it underneath our floor though. We'll drag it underneath. We'll grab the white in the middle of the far right column. And I'm just going to simply just create like a bit of a circle in the background. Quite a large brush size, maybe around about sort of 270. I'm just going to keep going round in a circle. Streak after streak making sure the brightest area is right behind our bear, but it kind of just streaks its way outwards, like so, just creating a lovely white glow in behind our bear. And we'll go over the top as well, just blending that out. So we'll just blend this out like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna go full screen with four fingers and we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's design. As always, make sure to drop a like on the video. Please drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of today's design. And as always, a massive thank you to every single one of you for supporting the channel. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.